Hi everyone, welcome back to the series of lessons in extended essay. You remember previously we talked about the general structure of extended essay, the title, the research question, restating of research question, thesis statements, and academic value. Today I'm going to talk about methodology. You know that in your essay, most probably you will provide some set of data, you will analyze them, and you will have your argumentation. Before you do any of them, please make a special station to talk about the nature of your data, how you will collect them, how you will connect them, and how you will analyze them. If I model your essay as a journey, it starts from an origin goes to a destination. You will have different choices to your destination, different roads, possible roads. The methodology is exactly talking about the special road you will select to your destination. It will have four different modules, approach, method of data collection, method of analysis, and evaluation and justification. I will talk about these four different modules one by one in this video. But before I start, let me remind you that methodology is written in past tense and passive voice. For instance, do not write, I selected four groups of students. Write, four groups of students were selected. And I should remind you again that methodology reflects the validity and reliability of your research. So pay attention that here in methodology, you will persuade the reader that you are going through a valid and reliable method. Okay, if you are ready, let's start from the first part, which is approach. In this part, you will talk about the nature of your data. Suppose that your research question is how social media can affect the mental health of teenagers. This is the cause and this is the effect. For instance, you have concentrated on Facebook and then the effect of Facebook on mental health of teenagers. Okay, tell the reader about the type of data. For instance, they may, may be quantitative. For instance, you have uh, counted the number of likes or you have counted the number of comments all, all together. It's very important. Or they may be qualitative ones. You have just concentrated on special types of posts and then you have considered the themes and patterns, the nature of comments, not the number of them. Tell the reader about the data if they are primary ones, you have made them yourself or no. You have used uh, others' data. Or which kind of relationship are you going to establish? How well, then counting of the number of likes and counting the number of comments uh, can be um, used to measure the effect of them effect of Facebook on mental health, how you will measure that. Do not mention the data. Just tell the reader about the nature of that. Second step will be very similar to that and high, highly um, related. Method of data collection. Here you should answer three questions. Number one, why this data? For instance, why Facebook and not Instagram? Why number of likes? Why number of com comments? Or why both of them? Tell the reader everything. Tell the reader by which tools did you do that? And also, how did you collect the data? For instance, number of likes from the beginning of that special page till now, or no? Just you have concentrated on a couple of weeks ago. Let's consider an example to make it clear. Suppose that this is a research question from um, an extended essay. How fast the political rumors are propagated in urban society by social media? Here I have political rumors and urban society. And I am considering how social media can affect the propagation of those political rumors among this society. You know that in extended essay, we have to be very focused. So among all the social media, we have to concentrate on one of them. Suppose that I concentrate on Instagram. Here I have something more to do. Um, for instance, tell the reader that you have just counted the number of likes from a couple of weeks ago till now. Or, no, number of likes, number of subscriptions, and number of comments. It's very important. Let's consider a quantitative sample. The survey consisted of five multiple-choice questions measured in a seven-point Likert scale. 
The goal was to collect survey responses from 550 active subscribers. Here, an active subscriber was defined. You see active subscriber here is defined as a person who had commented on more than 10 posts during the last 20 days. Participants were given five minutes to fill the survey anonymously. In total, 408 subscribers responded, but not all the questionnaires were fully completed. Due to this, 371 survey results were included in the analysis. Here I highlighted main points. As you see, everything is okay with this um, methodology. Let's go to the qualitative sample. In order to gain better feedback, semi-structured interviews were conducted with 12 low-level students. Here again, low-level student is defined as someone whose average score is less than 70 out of 100. Interviews were conducted in a small classroom next to the vice principal's office and lasted approximately 10 minutes. Uh, answers were recorded by note taking and seven interviews were also filmed with consent. One interviewee uh, preferred not to be filmed. Again, here I highlighted main parts. Here also is a perfect qualitative one. If you are ready, let's go to the next step. The third step will be method of analysis. Do not mention the data here. Just tell the reader how did you process and analyze the data. If your data are quantitative, please mention data preparation, software, and statistical method. If they are qualitative ones, please mention language, images, interpretations, and themes and patterns. Let's consider a quantitative sample. Before analysis, the gathered data was prepared. The data set was checked for missing data and outliers. For this, the outlier labeling rule was used. All values outside the calculated range were considered outliers. Here is the citation for that method. The data were analyzed using a two-way ANOVA with statistical software, SPSS. Let's highlight the major parts. Let's check a qualitative sample here. The interviews were transcribed and thematic analysis was conducted. This involved coding all the data before identifying and reviewing six key themes. Each theme was examined to gain an understanding of participants' perceptions and motivations. Again, I highlight the most important parts. If you are ready, let's go to the last step of methodology. Evaluate and justify the method. Do not let the extended essay to be finished and then justify your method. This is the time to advocate your methodology. Tell the reader why you choose this method. Why not other methods? For instance, you have selected the effect of Facebook on the mental health of young age, okay? Why Facebook and not Snapshot? Why you have counted the number of likes, not the number of subscriptions? Tell the reader everything and advocate your method. And also how this approach contributes new knowledge. If it opens new window to other parts of knowledge, please tell the reader everything. Mention strength and limitations and weaknesses, but for, don't forget that you have to overweigh the strength. Okay? The last um, hint or the, the couple of hints I will tell you is stick to the research question again because again i remind you that extended essay is the answer your own answer to your own research question so even in methodology do not forget that you have a special certain research question and you are answering that and at last make citation for similar methods if there are some different methods please make citation for those and tell the reader that you are aware of different methods but this is your method Okay, thank you for watching this video. Next video will be about the argumentation. See you very soon.